Okay, so this was the first question in the last quiz. What was uh, Iago's complaint in scene one? Another officer of the same rank was receiving higher pay. Rodrigo cheated during a card game and won. Cassio got the promotion that he wanted. He doesn't like the new uniforms that the fellow has chosen. He thinks they make the soldiers look like weak women. Well, what, which one is the right option? Okay, any other option? Fatima says option C, South says option C, Rimsha says option C. Okay, okay that's right. Kesu bought the promotion that he wanted. That's right. The next one was, why did Iago and Rodrigo awaken Braventio in the middle of the night? His wife was seriously ill. A marriage was taking place that involved his family. Thieves had destroyed his fields and orchard. There was a plot to murder him that night as he slept. Okay, I've got uh, Rimshaji has answered C and B. What's that? Basically, it was uh, his daughter who was going to get married with a fellow. So option B is the right option. A marriage was taking place that involved his family. Okay. Who was Rebentio? A very easy one. He was a fellow's in sign he was the previous governor he was a squadron commander or he was the he was a senator and destiny moral's father yes option d is the right one that's right he was basically a commander and destiny moral's father Okay, what was Rodrigo's complaint? He was passed over for a promotion. He was left sick and depressed over Desdemona's marriage. He was to go and fight with Othello's army or he didn't think the Duke was aggressive enough. Option B, option B, option B, option B. Okay, there was a, a sort of confusion. So some of the people they think that he was passed over for a promotion and he was annoyed at the promotion of Cassio. But uh, if we go through the story of the of the play, we come to know that he was really in love with Desdemona and he was lovesick, and he was really depressed on the situation of uh, what Othello did to her that he got married to her. So he was lovesick. Option B is the right option. What happened to Othello? He remained in his uh, position. He killed himself. He returned to his native country or he lost his mind. Okay. Option B, sir. Option B. Yes, he killed himself. Okay, who is sentenced to death? Is it Duncan? Is it Ross? Is it the thing of Cador or the captain? Most of you say is option B, Fatima says option C. Yes, it was the thing of Cador. He was sentenced to death. That's right. Option C is right, not option A. What did Bechtef discover? A note containing the outline of a plot to kill Duncan, an unlocked gate and drunk porter, another woman, dead flowers in the garden, or Duncan's body. 
Okay, I've got two options. Option B, Duncan. Okay, Fatima and Nimsha say option D, Saad say option D. Yeah, it was Duncan's body that he discovered. That's right. Okay, infected be the air where on their right and damned all those that trust them. What's the, what's he saying about himself? Macbeth says to witches, about witches. Uh, does he mean he's damned? He has been poisoned by them. He's too trusting a person or he's stronger than they of him. Most of you say he's damned. Why is it? Just go through the line. Infected be the air, where on they write, and damned all those that trust them. So he's not trusting them. It means he's not damned. The very close option, uh, Ramsha, Harris, and Saad, they say option C. Yeah. Fatima says this is verbal irony. We are not concerned with verbal irony here. We are concerned with the meaning. What does he say about himself? Let's see option. option C is the most appropriate one. Damned all those that trust them. Option C. Okay, Shakespeare's only son's name was Hamlet, Hamnet, Laertes, or Parventio. Hamlet's only son. Option B. Option B, that's right. Okay. Beware of jealousy, my lord. That is green-eyed monster. This is taken from Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Othello, or Tempest. From where has it been taken? Othello. Yes, it's been taken from Othello. That's right. Which river is associated with Shakespeare's birthplace? That same? The Tyburn, the Avon, or the Atlantic? Option C. Okay, option C, that's right, because the very name of the city is Stratford upon Avon. Following are the lines of, I'm your wife if you marry me. If not, I'll die your maid to be your fellow. Where these lines have been taken? Are they from Hamlet, Tempest, Othello, or Romeo and Juliet? I can give you a clue. They have been taken from the comedy. Limsha says option D, no. These lines have been taken from Tempest. Tempest. Yes, Tempest. That's right. Okay, some born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thirst upon them. These lines have been taken from very easy one. Are they from Twelfth Night, Macbeth, Fellow? No. Or you like it? I have provided these lines in different forms. So they are from Twelfth Night. Yes. They are from Twelfth Night. Okay, who is Hamlet suggests that uh, one should neither be a lender nor a borrower? Who says these words? Catrude, Clonius, Orsino, or Claudius? Which Hamlet? I'll say option B, Plonius. Sakta Munir, talk about your school later on. Yeah, he was Polonius. 
who suggested that one should neither be a lender nor a borrower. Okay. Fellow was sent to fight with French army, Ottomans, German army, or none of the above. Option A. Yes, that's right. Option A. Who is the heroine of the Tempest? Tempest, Ophelia, Ophelia. Miranda, Cochia, or Cordelia? Miranda. Miranda. Actually, Ophelia was heroine from uh, Hamlet. Miranda is the heroine of Tempest. Portia was the heroine of the Merchant of Venice. And Cordelia was the heroine of King Lear. So keep King it in Lear. mind. Okay, who began the tradition of revenge play? Thomas Kidd, Shakespeare, Marlowe, or Bacon? Who began the tradition of revenge play? Okay, any other option other than Tom's kid? Rinsha says Bacon. Oh, my good gracious Lord. Bacon was not a playwright. He was not a dramatist. He was a prose writer. So Bacon is not going to be there. Yeah, basically it was Thomas Kidd who began this tradition of prevent plays. The Massacre of Paris was written by Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash, Edward Spencer or Shakespeare. Who is the writer? Sad says A. Sad, mute your mic. Yes, it was written by Christopher Marlowe. That's right. Okay, what was the name of the Geoff Malta? Geoff Malta was written by Christopher Marlowe, and who was basically given the character of Jew. Was it Barabbas, Lazarus, Shylock, or Solomon? Any other option? What was the name of the Jew of Malta? <laughs> yeah, I've got some options. <laughs> that was a option. Fatma says, Mahatma. Nimsha says, A. Hey. Actually, it was Barabbas. Option A. Hey. Oh, we have discussed it. Okay, the very easy one. Temple Lane was based loosely on the life of which Asian ruler? Is it based on Kublai Khan? Is it based on Chengiz? And in Urdu, we call him Chengiz Khan. Is it Temur the Lane or is it Chuan Lai? Okay, I've got two options. The very name indicates he was Tamur the Lame. So it was loosely based on the life of this ruler. Okay, the unfortunate traveler by Thomas Nash is a typical love tragedy, revenge play, pastoral romance, or picaresque. <laughs> Yeah. 
Simra says option C. Pastoral romance, no. No, 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 no. The very name is indicating. Fatima says option A, love tragedy, no. Now we have, <laughs> we have just two options left. Is it either a revenge play or a picaresque? Saad says option B and Ramsha says option B. No, there is no revenge involved. The unfortunate traveler, traveler, picaresque is a tradition where uh, some hero, he has some adventures on roadside. So that is more appropriate with unfortunate traveler with the title. So it is option D. Yes, it's option D, picaresque. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who is called the first great stylist of English prose? The first great stylist of English prose. Is it John Lille, Philip Sidney, Francis Bacon? Uh -uh, I have wrote it again. Or Sidney. I've written it. Who is the first great stylist of English prose? Lille, Sidney, Bacon. No, we are concerned with prose writer. Lily was not a prose writer. Nimsha says option B, Sydney. No. Great stylist of English prose. He was Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon. Bacon is very famous for his prose writing, you know. So, Francis Bacon. Bacon was basically the first great stylist of English prose. Lily was a poet and a playwright, so he didn't write any prose. Well, the Spanish tragedy shows conspicuous influence of Seneca, Aristotle, Homer, or Virgil. Whose influence was there in Spanish tragedy? <clears throat> Conspicuous means that is quite obvious, visible, clear. Ramsha, what is this BCC? BBC. Basically, it was Seneca. So Seneca and plays were there. So Spanish tragedy shows the clear influence of Seneca. Option A is the right option. Okay. Novum Argonum is written by Shakespeare, Sidney, Bacon, or Walter Raleigh. Sir Bacon, C. Okay, any other option? Fatma says option D. No. Vivo 1907, option D. No. We discussed this in the, in the last lecture. Nova Morganum is famous writing of Francis Bacon. Yes, option C is the most appropriate choice. Ramsha <laughs> says B, no. Francis Bacon, it was option C. Okay, the writers who got training from Oxford and Cambridge are called Lollards, Catholics, <laughs> University Wits, or none of them. Okay. We have discussed it that the writers who got training from the University of Oxford and Cambridge University, they are called university wits. Lollards were basically the followers of John Wycliffe, and Catholics were also there related to the religious church people. So university wits were the people, the writers who got training from Oxford and Cambridge. So that's why they are called university wits. Okay. Can you tell me, did anybody get more than 20 marks out of these 25? 
anybody more than 20 or 20 or 19 or 18 that was so easy a quiz you should have scored Six, more than 20 17 16 